let's try this again, shall we? Hi! <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. Uh, I guess depending on if I stitch the other start on, I'll... it's my birthday. I turned 40 this year. And I decided to celebrate with the Gillian, or the Gillian, by Goose Island, which is a farmhouse style, a Belgian style farmhouse ale. Described as a wild ale aged in wine barrels with aromas of strawberries, honey, and white pepper, slightly tart with an effervescent body. So I've had several of these Goose Island uh, named beers. There's the Sophie. I bought quite a few Sophies and aged them over the course of five years. The bottles actually say, like they're they are bottle fermented or bottle finished, bottle fermenting. They add yeast as they bottle the beer so that it undergoes an additional fermentation. That's where a lot of the effervescence in the beer comes from. But it also means that the, the yeast working on the sugars in the beer over an extended period of time during storage in the bottle continue to develop the flavors of the beer. And with the Sophie, I found that uh, it kind of peaked at about two and a half years. That's where the, you know, there was the, the perfect balance. It got a lot drier after that. Not unpleasant, just personally, I liked it best at two and a half years. This is a 2016 <laughs> release of the Jillian. And so it's probably gone through the full gamut and is probably about as dry as you can get it, I would imagine. I don't believe I've had the Jillian before, though. So that'll be a new experience for me. Yay! Um, it's a beer I picked from my aging cabinet to celebrate my birthday. So, uh, yeah, if you haven't, it used to be easier to find, or I used to see a lot more of these in the, the local um, Total Wine, but I haven't seen them quite so much anymore. There's usually maybe five or six, but it used to be like they were a really big, you, you could find these easily and in large quantities at the, you know, here in the Northwest at the, the local uh, Total Wine. Um, See just how effervescent this is. Okay, good. Woo, wow, smell the fruit. That is, wow, that smells special. <laughs> um, so we've been over before the, the Belgian style, the farmhouse ale. So this is a saison. That's what it would be, a seasonal. Um, not a, a beer de garde or a grisette, the other farmhouse ales. Uh, cloudy. Cloudy honey, dark honey. I'm recording in my garage for the first time. Neighborhood dog was a bit barky um, when he came out and so it scared me out of the backyard. Well, it didn't scare me, but it chased me. <laughs> for practical purposes, not fear purposes. Wow, this smells, this smells special. Uh, it's been out of the fridge probably an hour. Uh, it was in my cupboard until last week really so it's it's been in a I mean I'm not gonna say have optimal aging conditions I live in a house without air conditioning but it's in the Northwest uh, so I mean our summers don't get super hot I say that last year we had hit 113 degrees or something like that or 112 degrees and that was just ridiculous um, and without air conditioning that means your house it's 102 which is ridiculous um, but that's not a a normal occurrence. Normally our house tops out maybe 85 or so degrees for a couple days each summer and the rest of the time it's, you know, balmy 60 to 75 or so depending on where I set the thermostat. <laughs> Dad life, right? Um, so it, it's been aging and it's only been in the fridge a little bit and uh, and it's been out now so it's it's nice. It's a nice temperature. I won't presume to guess what temp it is. I'd guess, well, yes, I will presume to guess. Uh, 40 to 50 degrees, maybe. And I am smelling, yeah, the strawberry, definitely like fields of strawberries. Not artificial, fresh, fresh, juicy strawberries. But also maybe some, some cantaloupe? Being a Saison, being, ooh, when you get in close, almost some dried raspberry now, like a, like a freeze-dried, like intense, like maybe raspberry fruit leather. That's some really intense berry flavors. 
Um, being a Belgian, being a Saison, it's going to have the the uh, Britannomyces yeast. Uh, and so you're going to expect some funkiness, but you're also going to expect a nice crisp tartness and a lot of fruity. And I'm not really smelling the funk. I am smelling really, really delicious strawberries, um, raspberry fruit leather, like intense. That just smells good. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Happy birthday to me. Let's see if YouTube demonetizes for that. Not that I'm monetized at all, but <laughs> you have a strike. <sighs> yep, that's tart. Um, but it's also like there's a there's kind of a an edge, and then there is a um. There's an edge and then there's a kind of a soft underbelly. Um, and that soft underbelly is melon and, um, and it's not like a, a lemon tart. What would it be? Hmm. Like a tart cherry and a tart peach maybe. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty nice. It's like a tart, tart cherry, tart peach, and then maybe more of the melon underside. Um, not picking up any of the the white pepper. That was a real, real strong and prominent flavor when the Sophie beer that I drank was younger. The the herbal, the kind of this this white pepper. And if you haven't had, so there's three different peppercorns, and I believe they're actually three different plants that both produce a small peppercorn. Um, there's a traditional black pepper that is, that's table pepper. That's the 99.9% .9 of the pepper you use on your food. And that has kind of a front of the mouth, uh, heat, warmth, and a bit of a spicy bite, and some, some nice earthy notes. Then there's a pink peppercorn, which is kind of sweet. I haven't had that too much. Um, so I'd, I'd have trouble like describing it for you, but it is a it is definitely a sweeter flavor And then there's a white peppercorn, which I have had a good deal of I used to keep um, White peppercorns in my fridge uh, or in my in my cupboard for uh, for spicing stuff And so while the black peppercorn is kind of a front-of-the-mouth heat The white peppercorn is kind of a tingly heat down the back of your mouth and down your throat and that makes for a really interesting uh, sensation. You can actually build some layers of warmth that run throughout your your mouth and down your throat as you as you uh, use the various peppers. Um, more like a ginger. You know how ginger really kind of warms and, and burns down your throat. That would be like a white pepper. So in the Sophie, uh, which was another Goose Island name beer that I've had, uh, it has that kind of that back of the mouth spiciness, which was really quite something else. Um, and in this, I'm not really getting that. There's definitely back of the throat. Um, I say all that, and now I realize it is the back of the throat. Yes, there's some warming going on, but I wouldn't say I'm being able to identify it as a white pepper. It's just there is definitely a, a warmth down the back of my throat with this. This starts out as an 8.8 .8 ABV. As it, produce, as it grows in the bottle, that probably goes up. I couldn't pretend to say how much, uh, but I would guess the ABV has gone up. And that might be where the where the back of the throat warmth comes from. Juiciness. Um, there are two two distinct flavor sections of this. When you first get it in, it has that tartness that just draws out the you know the salivating. The oh, this is going to be good for, that your mouth likes to do. Um, you know, when you have good food, your mouth is watering, so it, it brings up this really mouth watering juiciness, and that's that tartness, um, and that's really delicious and kind of all-encompassing, uh, fruity and floral. And then it that's gone after maybe two or three seconds, so it doesn't hang around very long. Uh, and then you're left with this nice kind of mellow uh, earthiness and a little bit of that Bretomyces funk um, and maybe some cantaloupe or honeydew, some of the softer, uh, more mellow melons with this still kind of the, the, the warmth. Uh, coming down the back of your throat. That's that's pretty nice. 
I have never not enjoyed a Goose Island uh, big, big bottled beer. Um, they're, they're Jillian, they're Sophie, they're Matilda. They're all delicious. I think I like the Matilda best, but that was really hard to find. The reason I bought the Sophies, while they weren't my favorite initially, was that I could find those, you know, I could find six of those bottles when I couldn't find six of others. I could find the Sophie, and I ended up really enjoying that quite a lot. Uh, Pepin Nero is not a um, is not a a big bottle or is not a, a farmhouse beer, but it has a, it's a it's a really special dark stout imperial stout that they did that I enjoyed a lot. Um, there's also Halia, and uh, oh goodness, there's several, and you can still see find them from time to time. Um, out here. I'd assume probably closer to the Midwest. It might be easier to find them. But if you find them, they are special beers. And I know some people aren't fans of Goose Island because it is technically a, a macro beer uh, just, uh, brewery. It's it's big. And they make some some misses when it comes to beers. They're, um, like they're low ABV uh, beer that I tried a couple years ago. Eh, not a fan. Um, but in general, like they're their base brands or their their base brews and then their big bottles they are all special i'm trying to remember some of the others ogden ogden was a special one um, i actually spent some time living just off ogden avenue in chicago so that one <laughs> always felt kind of fun to drink the street i lived on um anyways so this has been jillian by goose island or jillian jillian a belgian style style farmhouse beer from 2016 and uh, it's a good beer. And I will uh, <laughs> catch y'all on flip side.